are my loves? I hope you're doing all kinds of well and having the spookiest of months. I thought a crackling fire would be good for like the atmosphere for this vlog, but honestly, it just looks like I'm burning in hell. <laughs> but hi, in this vlog, I'll be reading a bunch of Dark Academia. Now, if you're not new here, you'll know I love Dark Academia books. I love the aesthetic in general, but it's not just that. It's the morally grey characters. It's the slowly breaking down of the overachiever's psyche, <laughs> the existential dread, the obsessive relationships and friendships and found families, and particularly the cracks that slowly form in those relationships. I find it all so juicy. And if it has some supernatural and fantasy elements in there, I'm even more sold. Wrinkling a bit of gay, love that. Some social commentary on classism, elitism, sexism, homophobia, racism. Give me all of that, you know, I don't advocate for Dark Academia and the bad things that the characters do in these books, but boy do I love to read about it. A lot of them are coming of age stories, a lot of them have a new character finding their people, their place, their home within these like intense friendships that are formed. My favourites that I have read tend to be The Wild and the Weird and I'm one of those people that don't class every book with an academic setting as Dark Academia that actually has to be dark themes. I want the melancholy, the tension, the impending doom of it all and twists and turns along the way. So I'm not asking for a lot, huh? So I've put on my blazer for the occasion, I've made this graphic of a bunch that I've already read and here's the rating I gave them all so you can kind of see what have been my faves, what I haven't got on with so much. And if honestly, if a book is described as Dark Academia, I'm gonna want to read it. So I have slowly been gathering a pile of hopefully great reads. Uh, I have a couple of YA ones here, which I'm a little bit tentative going in because they're not always as dark as I'd like them to be, but hey ho, I'll try it for the vibes. A couple of these are newer releases and some of them I feel like don't have as much of a like cult following, even though they came out a while ago. So starting with the YA ones, firstly, I have My Dearest Darkest by Kayla Cottingham. In this one we have a new transfer student who's going to an ultra competitive academy. After a near-death experience our main character Finch feels a constant pull to the town and the academy itself. We have another character called Selena who is top dog in the school really and then one night they accidentally summon a creature of immense power in the depths of the school. So they're gonna have to work together to stop the evil. I'm expecting supernatural stuff happening in this one. We then have The Society for Soulless Girls by Laura Stephen. Set at the Elite Carvel College of Arts, we had four teenagers who 10 years ago lost their lives in the North Tower murders. Now the college is reopening and fearless student Lottie is determined to find out what really happened. But when her roommate Alice stumbles upon a soul-splitting ritual hidden in the library and the North Tower claims another victim, time starts running out. Can they uncover the truth before the centuries-old curse consumes them both? So again, curse perhaps supernatural stuff happening this one too. And then the ones that I'm more excited for because they are adult, I think. We have Plain Bad Heroines by Emily M. Danforth, which a lot of people love this book. Set at Brookchance School for Girls, an infamous site of a series of tragic deaths over a hundred years ago, and soon to be the subject of a controversial horror movie about the rumoured Brookchance curse. So again, another one featuring a curse. <laughs> they Never Learn by Lane Fargo, I am probably the most excited to read out of all of them. <laughs> this one's about an English professor who's a serial killer. Every year she searches for the worst man at Gorman University and plots his demise. I am hyped. And then last but by no means least, we have The Lake of Dead Languages by Carol Goodman. Set in an elite school surrounded by a lake, Jane Hudson never thought she would return to Hart Lake. Her years there as a scholarship girl ended in a double tragedy, but now she's back there teaching Latin and the events that haunted her memories so many years ago begin to recur in front of her eyes. So these are the five books I'll be reading in this vlog. I'm really hoping to find some new favourites to add to my Dark Academia shelf. Or in fact, actually, I'm hoping to have a second Dark Academia shelf because I have more than this to read, but these are the five I've chosen for this vlog. So. Let's get into it, shall we? Hi folks, the week got away from me. It's now Friday and I told myself I'd wear Dark Academia outfits in this vlog, but then this jumper arrived. I'll need to move the cap to show you my cat jumper. <laughs> I'll kneel, but can we just take a moment to appreciate the cat jumper? <laughs> Anywho, I have already made some progress. The other night I was like hyper focusing on a jigsaw for my anxiety, which is always a test of my patience when you have cats or maybe just my cat. What do you think you're doing? Why? Oh, Tiberius. Oh. Why? 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 
But I listened to the whole of the audiobook of this in like one sitting and this was cute. It was a fun spooky time. I'm glad I started with something a bit easier to get through because I feel like I have some headier reads on the way. And it was sapphic, so extra points there for me. Really liked the relationship between the two girls. You had like the queen bee and the mousy shy one, which I always love that dynamic. And the paranormal elements were intriguing. I knew exactly where this was going to go, but didn't stop me enjoying the spook along the way. Not super gruesome or gory in any way, but there were some nice horror elements in there. And it had a cute found family. It is YA, so I knew it wasn't going to be as dark as maybe I would like it to be for Dark Academia, but I gave it 3.5 stars. It was a light, easy, fun read. I'd recommend the audiobook. It is on Scribd if you're in the UK, and I basically blew through it. However, <laughs> this one I am conflicted about. I only have around two hours, I want to say, of the audiobook left of this, so I have made it a big chunk of the way through it, and I'm still very undecided on my feelings. It's not really the vibe I was expecting. I do like, again, that it's sapphic, we have dual timelines, but what really appealed to me about this is that they're filming a horror movie, and we have a celebrity. I love reading books where a character is a celebrity. I don't know, I just do. <laughs> now, I was really hoping for more spooky things happening whilst they were filming this. Um, not super spooky, Unless you're scared of wasps or bees, or in this case, yellow jackets. But it has some good imagery, it has a nice atmosphere to it, the writing's not bad. I also quite like that we have the occasional illustration and whatnot. And actually looking at the comments on my haul and TBR, this one does seem to have garnered a mixed response. A lot of people are saying, oh my god, you should definitely read Played Bad Heroines, it's so good. And other people are like, I was a bit underwhelmed by it. I'm feeling like I'm on that side, like the latter, where I'm a little bit underwhelmed at the moment. But I'll save full thoughts until I've actually finished it, because when it comes to a mystery of this type, usually it's the end that's the clincher, right? And I do like, you know, a curse. Where did the curse stem from? How are they going to break the curse? And ideally someone will get murdered. That's kind of what I want at this point. <laughs> don't know what that says about me, but yeah. Almost done with that one too. Now this evening my plan was to finish the last couple of hours of that audiobook and then move on to this one because it just arrived. I was worried I wouldn't get it whilst filming this vlog, but happy that it arrived earlier because this one seems to be one that a bunch of folk are rooting for me to try. So I was going to move on to this one tonight, but... I think I'm hanging out with my ladies. I think we're going to a bridge. I don't know. <laughs> we just all really needed to get out of our flats and uh, go touch grass. So I think that's what's going to happen. So I guess I'll catch up with you tomorrow when I've hopefully finished this. Here's the aforementioned bridge. Queen's Ferry bridge, to be exact. We headed into this little pub, which was cute. Inside, they had a little bridge with a train going across it. Just the most precious thing. And I got myself a treacle sponge with custard, which was absolutely delicious. So I finished playing Bad Heroines and... Eh. I had such hope at the beginning when I picked this up because societies, sapphic, dark academia, horror movies. But I do not think that this book needs to be this bloody large for the story it was trying to tell. <laughs> in terms of writing, it was right up my alley as well because she's got some lovely descriptions in here. It was atmospheric and creepy in parts. But plot wise, it left me ultimately underwhelmed. We do have two time frames happening, two timelines. So the one back in the early 1900s was the most compelling to me. As we have a school for girls, three mysterious deaths, they're all found with this mysterious book by this scandalous writer, which leads the headmistress and her partner to believe that the school might be cursed. Love that. It was kind of a story within a story almost, which you know is one of my favourite things. And then flashing forward a hundred years, we're following some actresses who are going to be playing these characters in a movie about the school and the tragedies that happened there. And out of the two, you'd have thought I would really have been into that second timeline with it being a horror movie set and, you know, is the curse going to get them too? And like in my previous update, I mentioned that we are following a celebrity, which I always find super juicy, I'm really into it, but my God, this was long. <laughs> and I was expecting the timelines to connect in some meaningful way or expecting something really bad to happen towards the end and no, not really. We had all this tension and suspense, and for what? For why? It just kind of fizzled out towards the end, which is really disappointing when you've invested that much bloody time. <laughs> Can you tell I'm a little bit salty about how big this book is and hence how long it took me to read it? All for it to end up being a three star read for me. There were elements that I think could have pushed it to a four star, but by the end of this book, I was just tired. And I know it's a favorite of a lot of folk and I feel you on some of the elements, but for me personally, it just didn't work. That being said, I'll read more from this author. I'll be tempted about it. I'll check a lot of reviews before doing so. And I'm also now realising that this book doesn't really fit the vibe of this vlog because Dark Academia were. <laughs> we had a little bit of that, there was some atmosphere, but I just wanted more scenes in this creepy old school and to learn more about the students and this scandalous memoir. So yeah, I wish I loved it more. I'm a bit sad about it, but I'm happy that it's now ticked off the list and I can move on to the next one. I'm so excited to move on to They Never Learn. I am hoping it's a much faster read than that one was. <laughs>
Here's me trying to read whilst being judged by Tiberius for not paying him attention. As per usual, Bella gave him some attention right. though. They're very cute when they groom one another, however, it always does end in violence. This time Bella went for the throat, which I love her for that. <laughs> Hey folks, quick update because I am heading out, but I needed to yell about this book. I'm 122 pages in and oh my god, this is juicy. I am captivated, I am intrigued. This is basically most of what I've been doing today has been reading this book. And I could totally see this being a finish in one sitting kind of vibe. It's only like 340 pages, but it's super fast paced. And oh, it's juicy watching this like English professor try and find her next victim or plan her next victim's demise. She's going after all of these bad men and I'm living for it. Not just her though, we have a perspective of a young girl called Carly who has just started at the university and her kind of friendship slash crush she has on her roommate and they were roommates which is also intriguing but not as intriguing as the murder stuff. I can totally see why so many people were hyping me up to read this one. I can't wait to finish it. I'm actually heading out now to go and meet Ashley at Ashley's as we're going to do reading sprints round at hers for patrons together. Also, thank you to everyone who joined my Patreon. <laughs> I realise I've not said yet because I planned for a different vlog to go up last week but that ended up being a shamble so I just kind of skipped it. But thank you, I don't have the words. Like I can't articulate just how much it means. So I'm not gonna get soppy right now because I need to head out <laughs> and I don't want to have to reapply my makeup because you know I'm a crier and ever since Hob I'm broken. <laughs> I cry at the drop of a hat but yeah it's been a it's been a very in my feels week and I just thank you so much again but yeah I'm gonna go stop rambling now and go and read some more of this book. This could be a five star book y'all. I have had the best autumnal day today with my spooky boo Ashley. <laughs> Edinburgh in October is just, it's just the best vibe. I am a little bit windswept because it was particularly windy, but that meant that the leaves were blowing everywhere. I was drinking a pumpkin spice latte, walking around graveyards. <laughs> we had a grand old time. <laughs> and before I give you reading updates, I wanted to do a pumpkin haul. Is a pumpkin haul a thing? I think it should be. Because I finally took myself to Lidl. I've been meaning to for like a good two weeks. Because <laughs> they always have a great pumpkin selection. So <laughs> I didn't get pumpkins for carving yet because I feel like it's a little bit too early for that. So that'll probably be next week. But I saw this grey one and I thought, well, that's pretty unique. So that's the first one. <laughs> Is anyone even interested in this? I don't know. <laughs> but I am. <laughs> so I also got a what they're calling a ghost pumpkin you know a white one they didn't have any miniature white ones which i usually get but they did have the little munchkin orange ones and these are actually from tesco's i went to tesco's first and then little so i got three of those as well was it necessary no and then also this is ashley's fault <laughs> i shouldn't blame ashley for every purchase i make but like they had these little straw ones in tesco and i thought well at least these will keep <laughs> you know I can put these in a cupboard and bring them out every year. So I've got an orange one and a cream one and they're kind of made from straw, like woven straw. It was a vibe. I also picked up some of my favourite October treats. French fancies, but they're fiendish fancies. So they're orange. And whilst we're hauling spooky things, I forgot to mention, but I got a couple of Becca's candles from her autumn range. So first we have Ghoul Gang, which straight up smells like licorice. It honestly smells like you're walking into a sweet shop. And I got Death Before DNF, which... 
Smells like apples. It's so good. I did want to get the Cozy Fall Reads one, but it was out of stock, so I'm hoping she will make more of those. Becca, if you're watching, please make more of those. So I've had the best day. I also had a great night last night doing Patreon sprints. Thank you to everyone who joined those. It's the first time I've done like sprints with people in person. So it was me, Ashley and G wedged on Ashley's sofa. And we always say we're gonna have reading dates. We bring a book, we totally intend on hanging out, chatting and then reading for a bit. And it very rarely, actually I don't think it's ever happened. <laughs> so it was a bit strange and awkward like in silence with a friend just reading. I don't feel like I've ever done that before or at least not for very long and also I feel like I'm not the best person to do that with because I just kept gasping. <laughs> I'm very reactionary when I read. Is that even the right term of phrase? I don't know but should we do book updates? If you watch The Sprints, you know I was really into this book. This book was just so damn fun. I am really feeling books about female rage recently. Oh, Tib says zoomies. So he's just gonna be doing laps of the flat, don't mind him, but I had about 60 pages left of this after the sprint, so I came home and stayed up <laughs> to finish it because I was really invested and it was so good. There was an early twist, which I guessed, but I thought, oh, there has to be more coming because there was still more to read and there was a few more twists towards the end, but again, I kind of saw them coming, but that did not take away from my enjoyment of the book. So compelling, intriguing and juicy, like the drama. <laughs> like I said, every so often I'd do a little gasp when it got to a juicy bit, or occasionally just say, ugh, men. <laughs> Actually, I did that quite a lot reading this book because ugh, men. <laughs> this was so fun and it was just such a quick read. It was a breeze and I feel like with Dark Academia, sometimes, you know, they're gonna be a bit slower. They're all about the atmosphere. This was very plot driven. If you liked, for example, For Your Own Good or In My Dreams I Hold a Knife, Similar vibes because the pacing is good. Honestly, there was a couple of characters in here though that I wish had have gotten more of a comeuppance. Like I was rooting for her the whole time, but like a couple of people, like girl, go back and get them. <laughs> Loved how it wrapped up. Honestly, this is the kind of book that I feel like should be made into a TV show. And I think, I don't know if to go for a four or a five star rating because, because the twists and turns were a little bit predictable for me personally, it might not be for everybody, but it was so damn enjoyable. You know, five stars, sod it, five stars. I also have started the audiobook for the Society for Soulless Girls, not too far in yet, but it's British, it's British. I'm listening to the audiobook and some of the characters have like a, I don't want to say Geordie accent, but like Northumberland accents, I guess. I went to a university in Teesside, so I don't want to offend anyone because I know there are variations in accents. It's set at a elite college of arts. We're following two characters, two POVs. We've got the prickly one who's kind of sour. She's clearly been through some shit and she's not the most friendly. And then her roommate is this super sunshiny character, I guess. But there were some murders that happened at this college years ago. And her family kind of has a connection to one of the victims. So she wants to find out what actually happened. And I guess it's also gonna revolve around their potential friendship right now where I'm reading. I haven't got there yet, but I feel like we're gonna get the sunshine grumpy dynamic. I'm also hoping it's gay. I can't say for sure right now, but we hope. Also, I guess some kind of paranormal elements will probably come into play as well because um, the murders happened in this spooky tower and the tower is calling to the sunshiny character. I should say her name, I think it's Lottie. So I'm guessing Lottie and her roommate, the prickly one, Alice, are gonna have to work together to find out what actually happened and what's happening now. And hopefully, you know, things aren't gonna recur. So I'm quite excited to read this. It is YA, but it does seem like it's gonna be another fun, fast paced read from what I have listened to so far, which again, isn't much. But this evening, I really wanna read this. <laughs> So this vlog is probably going to extend over a week. This one I feel like could be a winner. It's The Lake of Dead Languages by Carol Goodman. The only other one I kind of thought I could read within this vlog was Black Chalk. But after, after I posted my TBR, I did get a couple of comments from people who have read this and said that it was really disappointing. And with the amount of books I have to read this month or want to read this month, I feel like I should probably set this one aside. But it has such a cool concept because it's based around a game. No, Cody, you have too much to read. So I'm gonna prioritize this one and this one. I think Tibbs is mad at me for not paying him attention for most of the weekend because I've been out gallivanting. Hi, I'm trying to set a vibe 
don't know if it's working but i just so happen to have some more reading updates for you firstly firstly this one pleasantly surprised me i love a bit of female rage this is actually a jekyll and hyde inspired story which i don't think i mentioned previously but might sway some people to try it i did know exactly where the plot was gonna go but it didn't take away from my enjoyment of the book with ya thrillers and mysteries it's very rare that i'm gonna be surprised by it oh actually this isn't in tone with this video, but if you're looking for YA thrillers that are quite shocking, I would definitely suggest A Good Girl's Guide to Murder series, the last book in that series. Oh, and also if you are wanting something in the dark academia realm, then Ace of Spades is great. <laughs> this definitely had the atmosphere. I liked the enemies to lovers. Could those characters have been a little bit more developed? Yes. <laughs> Did their relationship seem overly realistic to me? No, but I enjoyed it anyway. <laughs> had that development been there, I would have given this a higher rating, but I really liked the spook factor of it. Um, so all in all, I think I'm landing on like a 3.5 or a four star read. Rating, sorry. It was another quick one. I really enjoyed as well that it was British. I think I banged on about that for a while before. <laughs> that was vibing with the Geordie accents that were in here. I love, like I said, a tale of female rage right up my street at the moment i don't know what's going on with me but i just i really want to take down the patriarchy once and for all should we do it let's do it <laughs> so not much else to say about that one because there's not really too much to it but y'all i think i'm on to another winner i've been craving that proper dark academia atmosphere this whole time i've been reading these books the ya ones have kind of gone there a little bit they're spooky they're fun they never learn was definitely more plot driven than anything else but i loved it plain bad heroines mm, the atmosphere came and went but this one the lake of dead languages by carol goodman i'm not too far in but i am vibing so hard so far we're following a latin teacher at a prestigious school not the most prestigious it's the one where the bad girls go you know they got kicked out of a few other ones and they've ended up here and not only is she the latin teacher she was a student there so back in the day both of her roommates who she was really close with unalived themselves they both drowned in this lake that borders the school that is said to be cursed and then things start happening which make this teacher believe that perhaps the events of her past may be reoccurring in front of her eyes. And the atmosphere, oh my god, the setting, these girls of all their trouble, the Latin, the like focus on language and mythology. I am just eating this up. This could be my favorite one of the vlog. I mean, I know they never learn I gave five stars to, but different vibes, folks. And I was a little bit intimidated to pick this one up because I hadn't heard too much about it. I thought it might be like overly wordy or hard to get into. No, it's a breeze. I expect I'll read this pretty swiftly or I'm at least gonna try to. <laughs> Already enraptured in the mystery, I have thoughts, feelings, and theories, which I can't share with you because obviously it's a mystery style book. But I'm very intrigued to see if I'm correct. I'm hoping I'm not because I haven't really been shocked by any of these books yet. And I wanna be gooped and gagged by something I read this month. I mean, I do have a lot of thrillers and horrors coming up towards the end of the month but with the dark academia you know i'm mostly here for vibes and this is giving she ate she left no crumbs so i'm going to continue to read that and then i'll come back to you to wrap this thing up Let's wrap it up. I did it, I read all of them. <laughs> I finished The Lake of Dead Languages. I feel like the last time I updated, I hadn't got that far into it, but happy to report the vibes remained. It was still very juicy as I continued. I will say, I bloody guessed everything that was gonna happen again. Does anybody else who reads a lot of thrillers and mystery books and watches a lot of that type of TV also get annoyed with themselves for having read so much because she blooming guess everything? <laughs> or is that just me? I mean, I say that, you watch, there'll be some thrillers and things that I read this month that will completely catch me off guard and I'll be kicking myself that I didn't guess what was gonna happen. But I feel like these days it's rare and it's probably because I have read and watched so much in the past within this genre. But anyway, in terms of dark academia though, this was on point for me. Thoroughly enjoyed myself the whole time. It was a really easy read, which I appreciate because I'm definitely in the habit of listening to more audiobooks than I am physically reading. And this one doesn't have an audiobook. A one that I could find anyway, but this was engrossing. Super atmospheric. I also like that this was written like in the early 2000s. Yeah, I think it was published in like 2002. So there's no like technology, no influencer or internet culture, which I feel like sometimes takes away from the vibe when it comes to academia. I don't know, is that just me? Or even in like thrillers and things, because these days you'd be like, well, why don't you just call someone you've got a phone? But if it's set in the past, you know you know but yeah the prose was nice and rich it wasn't too wordy or too hard to get into it did keep me guessing even if in the end i was ultimately correct in my predictions i definitely want to see what else this author has written now because her vibe her vibe it's just exactly what i wanted to be reading and in comparison to all of the others that i read 
this month. This one feels truest to like the original Dark Academias that kind of started the trend, such as The Secret History, If We Were Villains. Although not as pretentious as those, but it does have a good bunch of like Latin, obviously, and Greek mythology references and tales told in this, so I was just living my best life reading that. I don't think it's a five star read for me because I did guess things and whatnot and something really needs to be all encompassing or shocking for me to give it five stars these days, but it's definitely a four star read and I would highly recommend it if you have similar taste to me when it comes to these style of books. These style of books. <laughs> but yes, that is the vlog. Let me know your thoughts on these if you've read them. If you haven't, are you gonna try them? If you have any recommendations in a similar vein, please do let me know. Especially if they have any like female rage, because that's pretty much all I want to read at the moment. <laughs> but I hope you enjoyed this vlog. Thank you so much for watching and for hanging out with me as always. In terms of the emoji, if you've made it this far into the vlog, please leave me candle emojis. There are candle emojis, right? <laughs> Not me. Well, opening up whatsapp to see if there are candle emojis <laughs> yes there are in case you can't find the candle emoji i'll also accept autumn leaves <laughs> please like and subscribe if you did enjoy the video and you want to do that i'll have my link to my patreon and instagram and whatnot that i sometimes use <laughs> down in the description if you'd like to check out like extra content and whatnot i hope you are having the best month please let me know what you're reading down in the comments like i live for this shit if you're reading anything spooky and it's good let me know she says having only like less than a week left of the month. <laughs> I am sorry that this vlog took so long to get out. I did not anticipate that being the case, but last week was a bit of a write-off and I've been quite busy this month, but you should be seeing another vlog, hopefully in the next few days. Touch wood, because I still have to edit it, but I, I have hopes and dreams. <laughs> but thank you so much again for watching. I hope you're doing all kinds of well, and I will catch you in the next one, my dudes. Bye, y'all.